There are three lessons in this training system. Lesson 1, Statistical Process Control Concepts, explains why it is to the operator's advantage to apply SPC techniques. The goal is to assure the operator that the implementation of SPC will make his job easier. The portion that follows explains why measuring a subgroup is necessary when evaluating a process. So the capability study can be displayed in a vertical bar chart called a histogram. The purpose of the histogram is to display the history of the process. It will show you how many parts of each size are being produced. It is done by simply counting the number of parts within each size group. Each bar in the histogram represents a stack of parts. All of those that are exactly the size will be placed here in this stack in the middle. All of those that are one thousandth oversize are stacked up here. Those that are two thousandths under go over here. And so on. Each stack is a different size part, either under or over or at the size required. Once all the parts are sorted in this way, we can graph the result. The finished chart looks like this. It will show you the spread of part sizes, which is referred to as the distribution. It was created by the normal variation of the machine process. By drawing a line around the tops of these bars, we can create what is called the normal distribution curve. This is normal because when the machine is operating normally, the curve will always look like this. This normal curve has a characteristic bell shape to it. The center of the bell is the average size of the... Lesson 2 explains how to gather a subgroup, then measure, calculate, and plot both x-bar and r-values. It also explains how to recognize out-of-control conditions as the next section indicates. Conditions that would indicate that the process is out of control. The first condition is when a point is plotted above the upper control limit line or below the lower control limit line. On the x-bar chart, it would indicate that the average size of the subgroup had gone beyond the normal variation established at the time the capability study was completed. On the R chart, it would indicate that the range of sizes within the subgroup had increased beyond the normal variation. Again, a point plotted above the upper control limit on the R chart would indicate the process was out of control. The second condition that indicates the process is going out of control is called midpoint shift. Midpoint shift shows up in two ways. First, it would be indicated by plotting nine or more points in a row on one side of the center line. Second, midpoint shift can also be detected when you find 13 out of 15 points falling on the same side of the center line. The third indicator of a process going out of control is called a trend. If a series of seven or more points show a steady movement towards either the upper or lower control limit, it is time to look... Later in Lesson 2, the median and range chart is explained. As well as the pre-controlled technique, the operator will be able to understand the concepts and accurately calculate and plot values, and determine out-of-control conditions when each of these SPC techniques is applied. Lesson 3 explains how the control limits are calculated for each type of SPC control technique. The segment that follows explains how to calculate the upper and lower control limits after the data is collected during a capability study. It then describes which control system to use. The X bar value and R value are computed for each subgroup taken. You will need to find two additional numbers before you can draw in the control limits on the chart. The two values are called the X double bar and R bar. Remember that the bar symbol means average of. Therefore, the X double bar is the average of the X bar values. To find it, add all the X bar values together and divide by the number of X bar values. Your answer will be the X double bar value. The X double bar value is the center line or average line on the X bar control chart. Next, compute the R bar value. Add all the R values together and divide by the number of values. The R bar value is the center line on the R chart. These two values, the X double bar and R bar, are used to compute the control limits for the control charts that will be used at the machine. These values are used on all three types of charts, the X bar, the R, and the median chart, to find the control limits. 
But before we draw a control chart and begin the production run, we need to find out how capable the process is. The X double bar value is the midpoint of the distribution of sizes. By placing a line representing this value on a scale that represents the allowable range of the dimension, you can see the location of the midpoint. The next question is how wide is the distribution? Use the R bar value to find the width of the distribution. Since the X double bar value represents the middle of the distribution, it would be the highest point in the bell-shaped normal distribution curve. The R bar value, when superimposed over the X double bar, will show you the ends of the curve. You must center the R bar value over X double bar line, since the R bar value is the average total range of variation. The X double bar line should split the R bar value in half. Now you can see how the process compares to the tolerance range allowed. The next question is, which method of statistical control should be used? You could use X bar and R charts, of course. These control charts are very precise and an excellent tool, but they require a lot of work as well. You could use pre-control. It is less precise, but faster and easier. Then there are median and range charts, which still require charting, but don't require as much computation. You have just seen portions of the lessons from Master Task Training System. Are you ready to take the test? I think you'll agree simply watching videos is just not enough. More than just DVDs and manuals, MasterTask provides you with a complete instructional system specifically designed to cause your machinery operating personnel to not only retain what they see, but to develop the skills necessary to put it into practice. To learn more about how these materials can help reach your goals, please give us a call. One of our training specialists will be happy to discuss your needs.